Hey everyone, it's Chloe and Laurie. What's going on? Coming to you live from a boat bus, uh, Boston, we are. Boston bound. We're heading up to speak at Feminist Coming Out Day at Harvard. And uh, we got to talking while we were on the bus, and we're really pissed off. We are really pissed off at the New York Times. We are. Um, so in today's edition of What Are the Feminists Pissed Off About Today, um, we are just appalled by the coverage that the New York Times issued yesterday about a horrific story about a gang rape of an 11-year-old girl. Some of the choice quotes included in this lovely piece of journalism were included concern about the alleged rapists, although I don't remember, maybe you saw this, but I don't remember them issuing a similar amount of concern for the victim. Actually, no concern for the 11-year-old gang rape. There were a lot of quotes about how the men are going to have to live with this for the rest of their lives. And what was her mother thinking? What was she thinking? Terrible parenting. Yeah, really bad parenting to get, go out and get her daughter raped. So first of all, I think it's really important to say that the quotes that were selected for this article, we understand that they don't reflect the views of every single person in the town of Cleveland, Texas. However, I think uh, it's pretty bad, pretty bad reporting on the part of the New York Times. Uh, to not include any commentary on those comments, uh, perhaps a suggestion that this might not be the best attitude to take, uh, sympathizing with the rapists um, or blaming the girl herself or, or her mother. Um, and I find it hard to believe that they weren't able to find any quotes expressing that sentiment from citizens of the town of Cleveland, Texas. And that was a point that Mac McClellan made at Mother Jones yesterday. And this is some pretty terrible reporting. So, the tiny little sliver of a silver lining that exists no, I think this it's whole a, I thing. I think it's a large sliver. A large sliver. I think sliver. it's a considerable we have sliver. A, we have a significant sliver, and the significant <laughs> sliver is that over 16,000 people have so far stepped up to tell the New York Times that their coverage of this story has been incredibly unacceptable, and they've signed a petition on change.org saying so. And that's actually, I think, a really amazing reminder that people don't want to accept victim blaming and we're moving away from that slowly but surely. Right, and there is some great reporting going on from the Houston Chronicle, more rounded uh, reporting that includes quotes from people who managed to muster sympathy for an 11-year-old gang rape victim. It's hard, I know. It's and, hard. Uh, and, a lot of, and a lot of sort of uh, critique coming out of the blogosphere of, of, the, of the reporting and, and of the victim blaming attitude, or rather the rapist sympathizing attitude. Um, Laurie? Yeah, so basically what we want to do is we want to remind you guys to go on to change.org, sign the petition. This isn't just about something being politically incorrect or uh, some piece of journalist, a piece of journalism that didn't um, live up to our expectations. This is about our health and lives. I personally, reading that article, uh, found myself thinking, well, I'm someone who wears makeup. I'm someone who socializes with boys. I'm someone... Um, wears clothes that I think are pretty and attractive, does this mean that I'm more deserving of getting raped? This is about our lives and our health, um, and it's really important that uh, we, we show you know, the New York Times and other news outlets that it matters how they're covering these issues, and we care. Right. So sign the petition, encourage your friends and family to do that, keep writing, keep blogging, write a letter to the editor of the New York Times, take action. This is up to us. Yeah. And happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Hope you're not stuck on a bus like us.